Hi everyone, this is Joanna from For Love of Paws Pet Service Dog Training, and here is Bear, he's my co-host, and we're here for Training Tip Tuesdays. So thanks for joining us, and thank you for submitting your questions. Uh, every Once a month I do Training Tip Tuesdays and uh, do my best to answer your training questions. So this time, this month, I got a lot of questions about chewing and mouthing. So chewing your furniture, chewing your valuables, chewing your hands, right, which can be really, really painful, especially if you have a puppy. Uh, they've got those razor sharp teeth, and I want to help you <laughs> relieve some of that pain by giving you some tips. So I'm going to give you five tips to help you with that. So uh, number one tip is to, if you are considering getting a pandemic puppy, there's a lot of puppies, and it's a great thing to be able to give a puppy a home. So that's really, really great. But the one thing we want to make sure that we're doing is we want to make sure that our we're not bringing a puppy home before they're eight weeks of age. That'll help prevent a lot of problems because they get a chance to learn a lot about mouthing from their litter mates and their mother. And if we take them anytime sooner than that, then we can run into some problems. So that's really, really important. Now, this um, next thing that I want to make sure you guys are doing is chew toy training your puppies and your dog. So this goes for little, little puppies, eight-week-old puppies, all the way up to adult dogs if you're adopting a dog. We need to make sure that they understand what they can chew and what they can't chew. Uh, dogs are naturally inquisitive and they like to use their mouth to explore things, just like children need to use their hands or toddlers like to use their hands to explore things. Same thing with dogs. But it's our responsibility to teach them what they can chew on and what they can't. They don't know that instinctively. So how we do this is we trade whatever they're mouthing for what they should be mouthing or chewing, which is uh, a chew toy. Um, we want to make sure that they understand that um, there's other things to chew on other than your valuables. And it's our, like I said, our responsibility to do that. Another thing you need to do is make sure that your dog's needs are met. Now, as we know, um, our schedules have changed a lot due to the pandemic and the restrictions. And dogs really like routine, right? They like they they really are comfortable with routine, just like we are. You can see how it's thrown us all off having to uh, find a new normal and a new schedule for our family, right? So same thing with them. So um, they're not this this whole new uh, style of being home all the time isn't necessarily what they would be doing normally if you had brought a, a new dog into your home meaning they may not be getting the amount of rest they would normally get because there's just so much action going on in the home. So we want to make sure that they're getting an adequate amount of rest because if they're not getting enough rest, they're going to be like us, cranky, right? <laughs> and crankiness can lead to more mouthing and, and, and whatnot. So we want to make sure they're getting adequate rest. And we want to also make sure, so if that means they have a little alone time, a little downtime for themselves, that's absolutely necessary. Um, also, too, we want to make sure that their their needs are met um, with their energy as well. So we want to make sure that they're getting out for daily walks, and and also we want to make sure that they're getting their their mental stimulation needs met as well. Because if they're bored, they're going to be chewing and doing more mouthing. So we want to make sure they have outlets for their energy, for their energy to exercise and their energy to use their minds. And how we do that is we've got lovely, wonderful toys that we can choose from. Also, what's really helpful too is these rubber, uh, anything that you have a hole in like this is really good for, um, for teething puppies as well. So a lot of times they're feeling pain and they want to relieve that pain. Well, let's freeze something, like stuff something in here and freeze it and help them relieve some of that pain. So lots of these on stock, in your freezer, ready to go. If you find your dog chewing something they're not supposed to, if they're chewing on your sleeve, they're chewing on your hand, don't chew on this, chew on this instead. So also too, this is also good for adult dogs too, or adolescent dogs. It's a really good stress reliever. It's a really good way to get some of that mental energy out. It's actually like a puzzle for them. Um, there's also awesome other toys with holes in them that they can roll around to bat out their treats. Um, so we want to make sure that, like, again, they'll get themselves into un other more destructive curricular activities if they're not given some curricular activities, the needs that they, the curricular activities that they need. And it's our responsibility to make sure that they get that. Also, too, um, you know, 
the number, another tip, the fifth tip or fourth tip is going to be make sure you have patience, right? It takes a lot of patience. It's easier said than done, of course, but it does take a lot of patience, especially when you're dealing with a puppy, right? So um, that's why it's good for us to have some rest time for our puppies and um, a rest time for you as well, right? It's perfectly natural. Puppies do need rest. And if you have any questions about how much rest your puppy needs or your dog needs or how much exercise your dog needs, um, Google it. You can find a lot of great information on the internet for that. So keep that in mind that, you know, um, uh, they do need that rest. They do need that exercise. They do need those outlets in order to be happy, healthy dogs. And again, that's our responsibility. So um, yes, but it does take a lot of patience. So I hear you if you're you're feeling <laughs> like you're you're struggling. So and again, that leads me to my fifth point. If you are really struggling and you do need, um, you know, some extra help, we are here for you. Again, my name is Joanna. I'm from For Love of Paws Pet Service Dog Training. We have group classics, group classes, and we go over this in class in more detail to give you that extra support that you need. We also do one one on one training as well, and we are force free. So reach out to a force free dog trainer, reach out to us, we'd be happy to help you. And if you have any more questions about uh, your puppy training or your dog training, please post them in the comments below. And uh, I do this once a month. So I'll do my best to answer your questions. And until then, Bear and I say goodbye, have a great week or sorry, a great month, actually, we'll see you next month.